branding. To brand something means to sear in or to burn into. It is about making memorable experiences. And I'd argue it's about making connections. You know, I didn't start in marketing and branding. I, before I started my own company, I worked at a marketing company. And before that, I became a mother of three small boys and I blogged and developed websites from home. And before that, I studied to be an art teacher. And education continues to be something that I'm really passionate about. I teach adults now how to make more profit in their business. I teach them how to get their messages out. I teach them about search engine optimization and branding. But the question I get asked the most is, is your hair natural? <laughs> now, I didn't always love my hair. You see, when I was 12, a little thing happened called puberty. And my hair probably doubled in volume. My hair was so big, and I didn't know how to take care of it. And I would brush it dry. And any curly girl will tell you, you should never brush your curls dry. It was so thirsty, and I used cheap mousses on it to try to slick it down. And there was two kids in my class that made me feel so insecure. One of them was a boy, and he would sit behind me and put pencils in my hair. And it sounds funny now, but it was mortifying at 12 years old. I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere, like I was wearing the scarlet letter of curly hair, walking around with pencils and getting called Afro girl. And the girl that made my life hell, you know, she, she came to the school for the first time that year, and she literally took my friends away from me. Now, I wasn't used to my curvy body, and I was wearing boys' sweatpants because I was the only girl in my class that was not allowed to shave my legs. And so getting ready for gym class one day, the three girls that I loved ran off with the girl who was mean and left me all alone. I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere, and I didn't know if anybody could love me. It's crazy. It's crazy. But the story that I was telling myself was that my curly hair meant that I didn't fit. And now fast forward to today, and my curly hair is the reason I don't fit, and it is a joyous thing because it is part of my brand. It is part of the story that is me, that I'm wild and spontaneous and I don't fit in, that I break the rules. And not everybody might not like my hair, but it's bold and it says something about me. And that's what branding is. It's something bold that says something about who you are and how you show up in the world. Whether it's a personal brand or a business that you're working for, a brand is, the visuals of a brand tell the story of your soul. And my hair tells the story of my soul and I'm proud to tell you I can fit about 160 pencils in it now. <laughs> that I know how to take care of it. But when it comes down to authenticity and being raw and real and human, I believe that branding is a powerful tool for making human connections. Now, if we're gonna get real and honest and talk about vulnerability, we have to think about if branding means that we have to tell our whole story. If we're going to be authentic, does that mean that we need to expose ourselves? Does that mean that we have to tell everything, that we need to be negative, that we need to tell those kinds of stories? Now, in my industry, there's a conversation going on about authenticity right now. And one of the posts I saw said, does that mean that I have to be negative and complain about my life all the time? Well, nobody wants to have a conversation with somebody who's complaining all the time. I sure don't. I tune out right away and start thinking about the 50 other things I have to be doing. Branding and marketing really is a conversation between the brand and the consumer. Just think about it. Any effective billboard that you have seen has probably sparked a kind of dialogue within yourself, and that is creating a conversation between you and the brand. It's the same thing with a social media post, whether you're actively engaging in it or it's 
rolling around in your mind. It's a conversation. So when we talk about branding and we talk about conversation, we have to remember that there's somebody else on the other end of that conversation. And the power of branding is that you get to curate it. You get to select which pieces are important to share and which ones to keep in your pocket because they're private. You know, I had a good friend tell me there's inside thoughts and there's outside thoughts. I don't really have a good grasp on the which ones are which, but maybe you do. So if you are one of those people that keeps all your outside thoughts on the inside, I want to challenge you today to get a little bit vulnerable and push yourself to curate a deeper conversation with your audience. We live in a world where everybody is behind their phones, we're behind a glass screen. I know it's really easy to say, oh, those young people, they're always behind their phones, but how many of you pick up your phone first thing in the morning and check it? And last thing at night? I've even been on a date with somebody who was checking their phone at dinner time. That's a deal breaker. You know, you might live in your mother's basement, but for goodness sakes, look me in the eyes. <laughs> So when we have this sterile background of a phone, how are we making that human connection? As a brand, it's a really unique opportunity because the crazy thing is we are not going to our phones to just amuse ourselves. We're actually looking for a place to belong. That inner 12-year-old inside us that feels like we don't fit in is looking for community. So as brands, if we will be vulnerable enough to share our humanity. We have the opportunity to have that conversation and make a place where our clients feel like they belong. It's about human connection. It's all about being real and listening so that we can actually provide services and products and a look that meets our clients' needs. It's not just about the way your brand looks. I have this scrunchie here and I can tie up my hair with a bow, but it's still the same hair and still attached to the same soul. Your brand is not just the way you look, it's the way that you connect. So if customers and consumers are looking to brands for connection, we have to think about what kind of community we can create to embrace our clients. Think about Harley Davidson, for example. They sell so much gear from headbands and belt buckles and vests and jackets that even if you can't buy a Harley, if you feel like you belong in the Harley community and you're decked out in Harley gear, if you get enough cash, you're not going to go buy a Victory motorcycle. You're just going to buy a Harley. So if we can create communities where people feel like they belong, we can create loyalty where your clients will come back to you again and again and again. This is one of my favorite clients at, at an exciting moment in her career and in her chapter. And, you know, my clients will pay more to work with me because I am engaged with them. So there's three main steps to creating brand loyalty, and that's answering these three questions. Am I safe? Do I belong? And does it make sense? When your ideal customers are engaging with you, they are asking themselves without knowing it. This happens in the background of our brains. Am I safe with this person or this brand? Do I belong here? And does it make sense? Branding started as a way to mark cattle. Like I said earlier, it means to sear into. And farmers used to mark their cattle not to just identify what belonged to them, but what kind of stock the animal comes from. Different breeding practices and diets and things could be identified through the brand of the cattle. But then as export started to take over, branding started to happen on crates. So I, for example, live off of coffee because I have three small children. And if I found a kind of coffee that I liked and it was getting shipped all the way to England from who knows where, I would look for a brand that I remembered so that you know that you're getting the right kind of coffee that's been roasted the way that you like it, the right kinds of beans. And now it has become a different thing altogether. We're in the age of limbic branding where people are looking to identify with a culture. 
If you walk into Starbucks, you'll probably see somebody on an Apple computer talking on an iPhone or listening to earbuds, maybe obnoxiously in, in a self-absorbed way. <laughs> you know, I'm guilty. But if you walk into an indie coffee shop, you're probably going to see somebody on a Samsung, maybe a little bit unkempt, in an ACDC shirt. Right? We create communities around the products that we love and the communities that we feel like we belong with. So this can all be explained by understanding triune brain theory, and that's something that's been explored by Seth Godin. It's something uh, that you can read about online, and it is essentially looking at the brain in three different categories. One is the structures of the brain that are considered the most primal, and that's the reptilian brain. And it's always asking, am I safe? So this is the part of our brain that's responsible for a fight or flight. It's a part of the brain that can be set off in an instant. And it doesn't require a lot of verbal dialogue for you to understand what that says. You know, I can know exactly what car I want, what color, what features. And if I go to a dealership and the salesperson makes me feel uneasy, I'm going to drive a couple hours to the next one. I don't need to buy it from you. You creep me out. Right? So then we've got the second part of the brain, which is the structures surrounding that, and that's the limbic system. This is the part of the brain that's responsible for human connection and that understanding of this is the community that I belong in. And this section is one of my favorite ones because I love to feel connected. I believe that we all have an, a need to feel known or to want to be known and to know other people. It's the part of the brain where newborns can understand who is related to them by blood, by their facial shapes. And it's a part of the brain that went crazy when I was 12 and my hair didn't let me fit in anywhere. And then finally, our brains are surrounded by the neocortex or the prefrontal lobes. And this part of the brain is responsible for wanting to know the facts or figures or if things make sense or if they're logical. And we might think we live here, but when it comes down to decision making, we make 95% of our decisions with the reptilian and the limbic system. So what that tells us in marketing is that we don't have to make the coolest infographic. It means that we have to make the deepest connection. And you can't make a connection without being vulnerable and without listening. So it really is about creating communities and creating places where people can feel like they belong. Can you think about the kinds of things that you're attracted to? The law of dispersion says that we go find things that are like us. So if I walk into a room, I'm going to be attracted to someone sipping a coffee or curly hair. Or if you're wearing glasses, you'll probably be talking to somebody with glasses. So what do we want to be like? What do we want to attract? And who are we genuinely? You know, branding isn't just about making a whole bunch of black and white images and saying these match, so that's a brand. It's much deeper than that. So the methodology that we use is based on a simple Venn diagram to create something authentic. And we start with who we want to engage with because it really is about that conversation. What is a day in their life like? What do they want out of life? How much money do they make? Now, my hairdresser really understands who I am. I'm the kind of mom that goes out and buys organic flour and organic sugar and then doesn't touch it and pulls the log of cookie dough out and cuts it with scissors. <laughs> you know, I want to be that organic mom, but I'm in a hurry. And raising three boys with my community can still feel lonely. I have a great support system. But I don't have a lot of time for myself unless I make it. So I used to use like two different kinds of shampoo and four different kinds of conditioner and a leave-in conditioner and a prep treatment and mousse and hair gel and all kinds of things to style my hair. Now I use one product in the shower and one product out of it. And they cost a lot more than those other products because my hairdresser knows I don't have time for myself and I want something natural. So one product in the shower, one product out. And we will pay more for these things that make us feel heard and that really respond to our lives. Then it comes down to why we're in business. You know, when you understand your core values and your core goals and you're not delineating from that, 
and you're making sure and you're constantly evaluating that you are hitting those core values, you will have a more authentic brand. And then it's really looking at your products and services and what you have to offer. And we really feel that all of those items connected will allow you to have an authentic brand. Now, if you take one out of the picture, for example, what you offer, say you have a really strong idea of why you're in business and who you're in business for, but you haven't defined your price points and you don't really know what you're selling, you don't really know what your product is, you're going to come off scatterbrained. Now, if you were to go the other way and you were going to look at why you're in business and what you're doing, but you don't know anything about your audience, they're not going to feel that sense of community. And if you were to look at who you're in business for and what you're doing, but not why you're in business, you're going to come off as a big baloney head. No one's going to believe what you're selling because it comes off as disingenuine. And that's really the power that we have with branding. We have the opportunity to create communities and cultures where people feel like they fit. We have the opportunity to be silly. And Jenna's laughing at me here, but we get silly with each other. We get silly with our clients. And, and as we are honest and as we are raw and real, we can create the kinds of communities where people feel like they belong and where they will pay more for our products and services and where they won't look to your competition because they trust you and they belong there. So I want to challenge you today to really evaluate how much of you is showing up in your brand and to be yourself. I'm Heather Murphy, and that's Branding Authentically. Woo!